Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I wanted to do another orbital element this time and it is the true anomaly. So what is the true anomaly? Well we first need to kind of revisit elliptical orbits and there's one key aspect that we need to take into consideration for the true anomaly and that is the pericenter. It can also be known as the periapis, the perihelion, and it depends on the context of the orbit you're considering really. But the pericenter is the shortest distance between the two objects on an elliptical orbit. Now, as they go round, they do change their distance, but at the shortest distance, that's the pericenter, and it's normally used kind of as a, as a reference point for a lot of the orbital elements. So, what is the true anomaly then? Well, the true anomaly is the angle between the direction of the pericenter and the current position of the body that's orbiting the large one. So, here I've got an example of a star and a planet, and it would be the angular position of the planet around the star from the pericenter. So it would be that blue kind of angle there, how far it's gone around since the pericenter. So with the well with an elliptical orbit, the orbital velocity is not constant. So with a circular orbit, it is constant, and the angular velocity around the larger object would always be the same. The area internally to the orbit would be well, that would be the same amount swept out over time. But the same is true for elliptical orbits, but because the distance between the two objects changes over time, it means the orbital velocity also changes. So when it's further away, it's orbiting slower. So the angular velocity around the star would decrease when it's further away. So this true anomaly is not going to increase at a constant rate. It will vary. So the mean, mean anomaly, which I did a separate video on, that would be a constant rate, whereas the true anomaly doesn't change with a constant amount as it goes around because the angular velocity on an elliptical orbit does change. So how is it normally given? Well, it's quite often given with either one of these Greek letters here, and the typical range is given between 0 and 360 degrees, or if it's in radians, it'll be between 0 and 2 pi. And how do you calculate it? Well, if you want to calculate the true anomaly, you can calculate it from the eccentricity vector and also the position vector. So if you don't know what the eccentricity vector is, it's given here. Again, there's a couple of variants of this. This is just one of them I've given you here. But if you know your velocity vector and your position vector and also the, the standard gravitational parameter, which is the gravitational constant g times M, which would be the larger mass. If the two masses are quite different in size, like the smaller one is considerably smaller than the big one, then it approximates to GM. And if you know that information, then you can calculate your eccentricity vector, and then you can also calculate the true anomaly from that. So thank you for watching, and if you've got any ideas for future videos or any comments, then just leave them in the comments.